Welcome back to DBS and the DFL studio, along with my guests, Romelia Dalfinis King and Dean Williams. Now, Romelia, what's the hardest part of being a counsellor, especially when it comes to dealing with families in turmoil? The hardest part, what can I say? Everything has its challenges. And as a counsellor, you have to maintain, you know, objectivity and being non judgmental. Um, and I think once you're in that particular mood or that particular space, then challenges become not easy, but you know, you're supposed to help people to understand where it is that they're coming from. But I think when you have clients who, for s some reason or another, are very resistant, they've come for counseling, but they're very resistant, or they're resistant to hearing what, some, what the other party has to say, you know, but you have to get them into that place where they are ready to listen uh, and when they, where they're ready to talk. Know, to me that that might be one of the areas that can be challenging and difficult okay um, and did you see the next to me and I just thought you know what I think it'd be interesting for the viewers to know how we met now, and the reason why is because I think that in life especially when we look at television there are people think sometimes well I'm not good enough to be on TV or I'm frightened to be on TV or they'll they won't approach you when really I think if we we're all on the same kind of wavelength so I thought it would be interesting for the viewers to know how we met very interesting mm. because I just happened to be watching your show on that day you were talking about relationships and which is a very um, intriguing subject because I have asked myself the question why is it so why are we why is it so difficult for us to communicate um, as uh, as people and why is it so difficult for us to relate to people and um, that day I was listening to that show and I really liked it because it was like oh finally somebody addressing addressing you know what's really bothers me and then the show went on and um, as it went on the the topic got interesting and I just and when the lines opened up I was <laughs> something prompted me to call and say call and say you know you have learned learn to love yourself first before you can love anybody else and then I just so happened to be on the next day uh, I, I happened to be at rituals which is my ritual <laughs> 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 and um, and then I saw you and I was all excited and I just wanted you to know I really enjoyed your show and and I called up and um, and we started talking, and we started about, talking the subject. about the subject yes which I found was very interesting and I told you I was attempting uh, writing a book about it because people need to understand uh, what's what's going on and why we why have we reached why have we reached this point in our life and um, it you know and that you were very interesting because you were very open so and uh, you know I, I, I just gravitated towards that and started talking to you and and here and, you are and then here, here I you am, are. not with not expecting to see you mm -hmm. uh, there or not you know people think I, I was talking you like you know <laughs> to, just to be on your show but I really think you're doing a great job and um, I love your show. Thank you. But the reason why I asked you that was oh, okay. just to tell, to show everyone that I cannot address concerns unless you bring them to our attention. People say, why don't you talk about this and why don't you talk about that? If you see me or any of the team, if there's anything that you would like us to discuss in the show, then please approach us uh, and talk to us because it's something that perhaps we have been speaking about. We haven't done anything about it. Okay. And I think one of the other things is the fact that you were talking about your, your book, which I think is very interesting because we're dealing with families. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think that it's nice to have a, a male opinion and a female opinion. Of course, you know, we have a counselor with right. us to talk about about families now we're here to talk about to try and encourage people to mend rifts if you're not if you haven't spoken to someone for a while try to speak to them before it's too late because there's nothing worse than regret mm -hmm. so let's start at the beginning and let's look at possible causes why there could be family rifts and they're going to be lots of them and every every one story is going to be unique mm -hmm. but really we're going to ask you what are the causes really that the common causes that cause family rifts? I think one of the major ones is that of communication and Dean hit it on the head when he mentioned it a few minutes ago communication misunderstanding and miscommunication um, you also have um, people not wanting to talk to each other because maybe um, they have political differences and that becomes very glaring whenever there is some form of election campaign and you may have a household that is divided because of that and, and people take 
offense or they take it personally that you have a different different political philosophy from from the other another one could be money finances you know land excuse me land is a big one here in st lucia the way um we all love the land we love st lucia some of us have inherited land from our great grandparents our parents mm -hmm. and some feel that they should be getting more than the other you know some feel well i've been working this land for so long it, sh it really should come to me and resent when others come on board and want to gain some form of control over it so these are just one of many and like you said that there's so many reasons why people have rifts in their family sometimes it could be to do with um maybe there is a, a substance abuse problem you know today i was reading an article where a woman <coughs> a journalist was has been writing a book or has written a book about her son you know he's 17 he's um he abuses substances and therefore his behavior is such that the family finds it very difficult to deal with and what has happened is that she has had to put him out of the house so that he could fend for himself or he could reach such rock bottom that he then realizes he has to go into rehabilitation so these are certain things that these are things that can also cause rifts within families and how do you then rekindle this how do you then repair how do you then begin to say well how can I put my family back together again now you know you said that and you spoke about land mm -hmm. um, what annoys me sometimes when we look at family is that, as you said, sometimes people just come and they just think, well, you know what, I'm entitled to this. Yes. You know, and it's very un it, it does feel unfair mm -hmm. to if you are the one who has been you know, nurturing and look after it and so on and so forth, and then somebody else just flies in and says, okay, you know, this is all mine or whatever. I yes. mean, it's very difficult to then say, well, you know what, forget it. Or it's your brother, or it's your father, or it's, or it's your mother. Forget it. It's all one family. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. Yes. But there must be a time when you have to accept that that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. you are, you cannot, you're not in control of that. But yeah. if we go even further back, and I was just thinking about when we're children, because mm -hmm. you started more or less on the adult end, but if we look at when we were children, I have met people today saying to me, Delia, I'm not going to call my mom because when I was younger, my mom used to tell me negative things about me. She always used to say to me, I was, I was never good. I heard people say, teachers say that, but it wasn't teachers. My own mother was telling me that I, I'll never be any good. So I haven't spoken to her for 10 years. I'm not talking to her anymore. And they're just, I'm not talking, well, why? You're an adult now. So what she did when you were a child, you are now an adult. Mm -hmm. Why is it that uh, some people have reached adulthood and they just cannot let go of what happened to them as a child the pain the pain is still there and the pain of rejection is still there I mean you're an adult but the child is still within you but the person who's supposed to love you the most the person who's supposed to take care of you the most the person who's supposed to tr you're supposed to trust and this person is supposed to rear you and give you the the confidence in yourself has not done so so the pain is still there and how do you begin to deal with this pain in order to forgive and forgiving for the the hurtful words right the not being there not being supportive and not telling you good things about yourself so that you can grow up to be a confident adult how do you begin to forgive that person mm -hmm. you um, know I mean, and, and that in itself is difficult. And Dean, I, I, in, you know, in your, your role as being a coach, I'm sure that there are lots of things happen. Well, even before but becoming a coach, mm -hmm. because stepping into the field of coaching re requires a, lo a lot of um, self, self analyzing and uh, self creating. And growing up, yeah, I got a lot of that too. but that wasn't me I, I a lot of what too? A, a lot of that negative a, a lot of that negative either people say that you know that causes them not to talk to their mother but I I understood where that was coming from because that was just anger action reaction so that was at that age I understood because my father left us uh, left uh, well, my mother my sister uh, at the age of three and um, so she was left to take care of us 
uh, my sister and myself, along with her sisters, because her mother was deceased and um, her father wasn't around. So my my mother had a lot of building, carrying of the family, keeping it together. So I mean, hats off to her now uh, and and always because it, it, people need to understand that parents do struggle and go through their own personal personal wars or personal you know chances at life and um if you if you're gonna take if you're gonna take on t on that negativity and not be the change that you want to see mm -hmm. then you're always gonna be in that place and you it's no fault of your mother because she was only reacting to the struggle because there was no communication who's communicating with her you know she had to do everything on her own and i watched it and even just looking back now, just you know, my mother is a resilient woman, and I love her, and she has she has taught me to turn neg turn your negative into a positive because she took not having a mother, not having a father, raising her sisters, raising my sister and myself, not having a man around, and doing it. Mm -hmm. Now you said <laughs> that, and a lot of people might say, Dida, you're out of order here," but I'm just going to say it. I find that there are a lot of um, young adults who want to blame everything and everybody instead of themselves. True, and I totally, I, I totally. They will blame. Back you they one. blame the parents mm -hmm. for them not being able to achieve certain things in life. Um, and when you ask them, well, what have you done to achieve yeah, exactly. something? They're just they're sitting there and they say, well, it's my mother's fault because yeah. she didn't teach me to clean the house. It's the blaming game. So I'm just, yeah, so why should I now start cleaning the house? My mom's telling me to go and clean the house before yeah. I can go out. Why would I want to do that? Because when I was younger, she didn't teach me to right. do those kind of things. Right. So they're blaming other people mm -hmm. instead of them moving. Classic scenarios where people say, well, my parents left me. They right. left me. They, they, they left England, they came to St. Lucia, and they left me. So now that they're coming back to St. Lucia, my, parent, my mother can't tell me anything. But isn't that the reality for a lot, of, um, a lot of children? And it's also the reality for a lot of adults who grew up in the 50s and 60s. Um, that's a reality for them. You know, the parents left, they, the parents went off to look for a better life, and some of them felt resentful because they were left behind. Now, some of, the, some of those children were left with abusive caregivers, and some were forgotten until they became adults, and their parents, wherever they were, then wanted to come back and want to kindle or rekindle or rebond or bond with a now young adult who di they did not raise. And so I there's almost like a resentment. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it is justified because a lot of parents actually left our shores in, in order to seek for a better future for their children. Okay, and we're going to explore that a little bit more when we come back from the break. But the giveaway questions tonight. Ladera is offering a romantic dinner for two served in the new Dasheen cellar with cuisine compliments of executive chef Mark Atkinson, formerly of Sandy Lane in Barbados. Each dish will be matched with a wine selected by master sommelier Karim Boulay. To win this absolutely amazing gift, tell us who is the most romantic couple you know? How long have they been married? And why do you think they are romantic? Who's the most romantic couple you know? How long have they been married? And why do you think they are romantic? Tell us by, the, by 10 a.m. Monday, 6th of May. Now, which Caribbean island did Carib Cable first start in? Was it St. Lucia, Barbados, or St. Vincent? The winner will receive a Carib Cable gift bag. And our third giveaway tonight, Caribbean Blue Naturals by Natmeg Limited is giving away one of their exciting new all-natural spa gift sets. The question is, Natmeg Limited is the manufacturer of two brand name product ranges that are made in St. Lucia. The first one is Natmeg Herbals. What is the other? Of course, this is Delore Factor Live on DBS. When we come back, we're going to continue talking about parenting, talking about family riffs, and we'll be coming back to take some of your questions and your calls. So stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 